the debates that took place on the quality of higher education was finally uh, ending up at the question, how can we measure quality of higher education? This task was taken over by the newly established institution, the NAC, National Assessment and Accreditation Council in 1994. Since then, we know that almost all institutions of higher learning across the country have gone in for assessment and accreditation, yet there are several uh, institutions which are yet to go through this process of accreditation. Now, why me presenting this uh, series of lectures to you? My experience as twice IQAC coordinator for the college during its third and fourth cycle uh, gave me several insights into the working of um, IQAC itself and also um, got my ideas about quality uh, sharpened at uh, the college while I was working through these uh, processes. Besides that, the college itself went for its accreditation uh, way back in 97, 98, which was one of the first colleges in the country to have gone in for accreditation. I have understood that colleges which have been swift enough to understand the process, work through it well, have made quality changes in their institution, which has in many ways benefited the institution. And of course, it got a much better grade than what it was earlier. However, whenever I have uh, I have spoken at uh, different seminars and workshop, I also discovered something else, that institutions take IQAC as a, a burden and they feel that somehow that activity of IQAC must be carried out and at the end of the uh, day, uh, just before assessment, just before a year or so before uh, the actual uh, submission of the um, report, institutions begin to worry about accreditation and assessment. Then it becomes a hurried affair and um, becomes very burdensome and of course it shows itself in the kind of quality that can be presented to the uh, NAC as well. So I shall share with you my insights on uh, the assessment and accreditation process itself uh, and also, um, may I will touch upon all the criteria uh, that are, uh, are given by the NAC and uh, also the processes of documentation as we go by. So today's uh, lecture will be on a very simple subject, uh, much simple in the sense that it needs to be understood and we need to be motivated to assess and accredit our institution. Why should institutions go for accreditation? This is the theme of uh, today's uh, presentation to you. Um, kindly share this video with your colleagues and uh, also subscribe to this channel so that uh, I can present more uh, presentations to you. Your comments and uh, suggestions are welcome because that will help me uh, to present to you what exactly you require for your institution. So let me move to the uh, presentation. These two, prophet, these two are very prophetic words. Uh, these words mean a lot to me when uh, I imagine how institutions go through this process. The first one is about the survival. And the survival to me is of those who can adapt to change. Now, the kind of changes that are taking place around us in the education sector, as much in the socio-economic and political sector, both internally and internationally, demands that we adapt our higher education to those changes. So how do we adapt to change and what is the idea of change for an institution? 
I can understand change something this way. Different responses to change gives different kinds of uh, outcomes. Change itself is just happening on its own. And how do institutions respond to that change? The first one, let me understand this first category of people and how they respond to change. The first category of people are those who come very monotonously, carry on their work, whatever is assigned to them. Uh, they are not uh, alert to any change that is happening around them and they just move on. They just come and do their work. Now, there is a second category of uh, uh, staff and non-teaching staff in the institution who believe that change is taking place. It's not that they are not alert to it. They are alert to the change, but somehow they do not want to be a, a part of that change. So they know change is taking place, but they do not want to be a part of the change. Simple reasons like um, if I participate in that change, I will have more work to do uh, or uh, uh, I may have to uh, sacrifice some activity that I was usually doing or I may uh, disturb my uh, work schedule in the day and so on and so forth. So there could be many reasons why an individual is okay not to do anything about the change but be aware of the change. So we have two categories there. The third category of people are those who not only recognize that there is a change, they also come to the condition that I too must participate in that change. So they very willingly join the various uh, committees that are formed, uh, share their ideas at various committees, participate in various committees, and they become a part of a system. So that is a third category who are willing, volunteering, and um, when asked to do certain kind of work, they take up the work and they carry on with that work. That's the third response to change. Now, there is one more response to change. That response is change is happening. I can recognize that change. Can I be that change? Can I lead that change? Now, when I say can I lead that change, I am not at one point talking about the management or the principal or the head of the department or the dean or uh, anybody of um, head of something to be the change a leader. Anybody can be a change leader. Every individual is a leader when it comes to NAC. When it comes to quality, everybody is a leader. Quality itself is a matter of choice. So choice means what? Choice is the uh, choice in the kind of uh, values we want to practice, the kind of attitudes that we want to express, the kind of uh, skills that we want to learn and practice the kind of behavior we may show with uh, insiders and outsiders and the kind of knowledge that we may need to acquire because we have to adapt to this change. So quality is definitely a matter of choice both at the individual level and at the institutional level. So adapting to change, that four categories of uh, people in an organization they are the ones who have to respond to the assessment and accreditation activities. So it is necessary that the first and the second category of people who do not respond to change and who do not know what is change, they are also lifted from that ring, uh, rung and put into the at least a second category where they say that they will participate in the change process. And many who are in the change process participation could very well become a part of the leadership of the organization where they take on leading variety of activities that are necessary to provide quality education on campus. It could be heading a cultural uh, committee, it could be heading a debating committee, it could be heading an extension service, it could be heading any of these kind of activities. It is not necessary that only the heads and the deans and the principals can head the institution. All these are leaders in their own right because everybody is very resourceful and the moment we realize that everybody is resourceful and can contribute to the process of quality enhancement, then 
the quality of the institution just increases. The other very important uh, uh, statement I'm making is about Avril Toffler. And I like it because he says that it is not that we know how to read and write. That is what everybody knows. But we need to learn, then we need to unlearn. Now, unlearning is very difficult because we are used to certain styles of working. We are used to certain uh, processes that are happening. And these processes have been uh, rather quite good for us because it has not uh, put us into difficulties. It has not put us into any trouble. And therefore, we are okay with those kind of activities. But then, if we are talking about adapting to change, then we must learn and then unlearn many of the things that we have done before. Many things that we were doing before, many things, the methods by which we were doing, the many things by the way we were leading others, these methods will have to change. We can no longer have that same process going on. So we need to learn, we need to unlearn, and unlearn means changing the paradigms that we were having. The paradigms of leadership, the paradigms of being a member of the group, paradigms of being a non-teaching staff in the campus, all these. What is the role that we play in quality enhancement? The entire story has to change. We need to unlearn many things that we were doing and learn something very different. We need to relearn. So until and unless an institution is willing to unlearn and relearn the new processes that are so necessary for quality enhancement, IQAC will be a burden for that institution. So changing the way we look at quality, changing our perspectives on quality, changing the way we lead our uh, institution, changing the way we have taken up activities on campus, all of them are parts of the quality enhancement program. Now, when I look at um, accreditation, accreditation is a process which will happen after the NAC comes, peer team comes in, and they also uh, assess our documents that we uh, project as what we have done during the uh, five years of uh, academics. Then after this assessment and their visit into the campus, they accredit the institution. So the peer team would give a certain grade to the institution. Those grades and details are available on the NAC, NAC website. I am not going into explaining those NACs because they are quite uh, visible and quite clear. I am only focusing on the intricacies of working with quality. I am only working on the processes that can be um, maybe changed a little, maybe updated a little, maybe um, more, more participative in nature so that the institution can benefit from this whole assessment and accreditation process. So there are set standards by the higher education for the higher education institutions by the NAC and every institution will be assessed on the same set of parameters. Of course, category wise uh, institutions will have marks allotment different according to the kind of institution. Let me look at it this way. The benefits of assessment and accreditation can be put into two. I would call them the internal benefits and the external benefits. And uh, the grade that we get is a sort of a uh, diagnostic tool. I would say it's like an indicator. It indicates the very processes that happen in an uh, institution. An indicator, because we can't directly understand many things, so what we do is we uh, we are assessed on the basis of indicators or parameters that have been developed by the NAC itself. Let me first see what are the external benefits of accreditation. The first and foremost, we must remember, it's an official recognition of the college in our institution in terms of uh, grade, in terms of quality. It cannot be changed once it has been uh, given by the uh, NAC. 
So it's an official recognition. It will be there on the NAC website. You can check out for colleges. You will find the name of the college, the state, the grade, uh, the cycle in which it was accredited till when the accreditation is valid. All these details are presented to the, um, to the public in that particular uh, website and the document. Now, once an institution is uh, accredited, it also uh, shows accountability to various agencies. It, it shows that it is having certain accountability in the various processes that are expected of it. It could be teaching, it could be learning, it could be research, it could be extension, wherever. So there is an accountability of these activities that the institution has been performing. And then uh, once the grade is given, it becomes a matter of public trust. So the public begin to uh, trust this particular institution with good grade and uh, believes uh, that there is something that this institution provides and has got confidence in the quality of that particular institution. Uh, this assessment and accreditation also creates a challenging environment. That means the peer institutions also come to know about it and to some extent they are also uh, influenced by the grade each college gets in that uh, locality, in that state or even at the national level. The alumni of the institution present themselves to employers. So they are the uh, ones who carry the ambassadors of the college or the institution, they carry the quality of institution on themselves. So the employers begin to trust these institutions because of the kind of students who pass out from them. And also when students apply for higher education programs, there also the same issue comes up that students from this particular institution with this kind of a grade is certainly of a good quality. So again, we are coming to a situation where we get external recognition for what we have done internally. We also get recognition by professional societies. Now, what do we mean by professional societies? We all know. But here is a case where it could be an NGO, it could be um, a research body, it could be a, a work that may be done by another uh, private sector organization. They all begin to recognize the college uh, in terms of quality because the quality is a the grade is a public matter So even if they have any interest in an institution, they can easily look up into the uh, NAC website and understand what is the quality of that particular institution Parents and other stakeholders are definitely influenced by the quality of the institution by looking at the grade because they can understand that this college has got a good grade or a poor grade and what can be expected of that institution when they send their uh, children to study in these institutions. It also maintains good private sector confidence. The private sector can participate in institutions in a variety of ways, including uh, you know, providing um, a scholarship or providing a chair or providing resources like uh, books or um, a software or whatever. In all these cases, they also will understand, yes, this college is of a good quality and they might even want to tie up with the college for running a course on the campus. All these comes because of the NAC grade. So when the NAC grade is good, then they would feel that this is a college or an institution where they would like to be a part of um, uh, the process in which they would want to uh, place themselves. Also, we find that uh, funding agencies, research funding, especially research funding agencies, will find it meaningful when the grade of the college is good because the SSR report of the college is also available online. At all times, it is available online and um, bodies which are interested in uh, consulting with the college or uh, carrying out collaborative research with the college will definitely 
uh, look into the college and its credibility in terms of the research that it has done, the kind of patents that it has created, the amount of journal articles that have been written by the faculty or the books that have been written. All of this will be visible on the college website and therefore institutions will also have um, uh, an understanding of that and they could use it as a decision making point. We also say that uh, when colleges improve their quality and the grade, we as an institution also contribute to the quality education system. The education system which we have been criticizing for so long, we can also make changes in that education system by contributing and getting a good grade. We also contribute to national development because when the institutions of higher learning improve, then research, innovation, technology adoption, uh, policy making, all of them will change because students who pass out from these colleges can contribute much more uh, uh, valuable than what they were doing otherwise. We also find that uh, institutions which have got a uh, higher grade also in, they, they are involved in inculcating values, uh, skills and attitudes in students besides knowledge. So these kind of uh, uh, benefits will be available to the body in general, to the system in general because students belonging to good graded uh, colleges also turn out to be good in many aspects of employment or in other programs that they may pursue. Let me now look into the internal benefits of this accreditation. There are many, internal benefits are many. And uh, one of the thing is, it is for the institution to know that there is a quality system in place. That means for all the activities that we may do on campus, it could be sports, it could be cultural activities, it could be extension activities, it could be research, it could be attendance, it could be conducting the exams of the campus. All of these exam, all of these uh, areas we can now, if the college is accredited, we can know that there is a quality assurance system in place in almost all activities that the college does or the institution does and there are standard operating procedures for almost all activities on campus. That is what would make it uh, replicable in terms of uh, um, the times that we want to do something qualitative. Then when institutions also get good uh, grade and quality, it means that it invites students of good quality and also invites students in large numbers to join the uh, institution, which means the admission numbers will increase and uh, there will be uh, no problem about getting students for a course. Now, this is one of the problems that we find that many institutions spend a lot of money on advertising for getting students. So that can be corrected when uh, the institution can get a good grade. We also find that uh, a good graded college also attracts talented, motivated, uh, and uh, well-qualified faculty for uh, faculty members to become members of the faculty. And uh, thus becomes the task of training much easier because they are already of a high caliber and they could be uh, provided with training and the quality of the education can further improve. Of course, government funding is another thing that is dependent upon the grade. And uh, though many colleges are not there in this category now, except the government colleges and some of those aided institutions, the rest of them may not get government aid. But still, for these institutions also, the uh, funding that can come from the government is dependent on um, the, or the various ministries can give funds to even institutions. These institution funding can also, is also dependent upon the grade that the institution has. Um, sometimes uh, or many times, the society also becomes uh, philanthropic and would like to donate to their um, uh, institution. It could be the alumni who are willing to contribute to their society, to their own institution. So they would rather very joyfully uh, provide funds to their institution if the institution has been graded well in terms of a NAC uh, accreditation. So that is also something very useful for the college. 
then public funding of research of course when institutions do their research well institutions have got good quality uh, research publications uh, and so on then um, of course it invites public collaborative research and public research funding also it uh, uh, helps institutions uh, to get government fund for infrastructure building. When institutions do very well with their accreditation uh, grades, then the government, if they are funding, they can also provide a larger amount of fund, allocate more funds to institutions which are doing well in terms of quality. Uh, there is also this uh, NAC, uh, national reputation and peer recognition. Of course, when the institution does well, um, there is a national reputation that is built around that college and people recognize that college to be one, a good one. And also we find that peer colleges or peer institutions also uh, benefit in terms of this college being here, institution being here, learning a couple of things there or wanting to compete with these colleges and improving their own quality. And there is also the intra and inter-institutional interactions. Now, very many times when we invite uh, guests to come to college to deliver talks or to uh, inaugurate events or to be a resource person, individuals will immediately look at the college, find out what is the grade of the college, how good has been the college uh, in its uh, quality. So that determines the kind of resources we get from outside to provide quality, um, uh, to invite quality resource people. It also becomes that when a college is done well in terms of the grade, then it also happens that members of these institutions are invited for uh, giving lectures outside, conducting workshop outside, becoming a member of a board of studies, a board of evaluation, a research uh, thesis evaluation. A lot of these academic works uh, get uh, driven to these kind of institutions because they have created uh, an image of themselves that they are good in terms of the NAC assessment uh, with uh, accreditation of a higher grade. Of course, the other very important thing is once a college uh, or an institution is graded with high quality uh, in terms of grade, then it, it is a self-motivated institution itself gets involved in improving the processes that happen. They are constantly working, reworking, finding out how what are the better methods of carrying on their uh, academic processes. So there are a lot of initiatives that happens. A lot more committees will form into that institution. A lot more kinds of uh, courses may come in. Many kinds of uh, initiatives in terms of uh, academic and non-academic can also happen. Also, the institution can get what uh, it can start doing is a SWOC analysis. Uh, the strength, weaknesses, opportunities and challenges. This is a very powerful tool for any organization to constantly work on its quality. Now, let me tell you that uh, this work analysis need to be done on a regular basis for the institution because if we are interested in quality uh, on a regular basis, this is something that has to be done. Now, I shall be presenting to you one session or two sessions only on the SWOC and how to benefit from conduct, how to conduct and how to benefit from a SWOC analysis. The other thing that can happen is there is an accountability of all the systems and processes. Let it be the marks, let it be a question paper setting, let it be the con conducting of the board of studies or let it be the conducting of Viva or let it be the, uh, the extension services that are uh, held, let it be the placement activity, any of these activities that the institution um, has to engage itself in, there is more of accountability in that there because they all these have to be presented in terms of documents so accountability is seen in the documents that are presented and finally the processes that become more authentic, more dependable. Students know what to expect of these processes as much as teachers know what to expect of uh, these processes that are working in the system. And there are future initiatives that will automatically happen once the IQAC uh, takes over its uh, leadership position, then the many things that have to happen in this institution uh, begins with IQAC. Now, IQAC is not a doing body. It is a 
thinking body. That is often uh, the difference between IQAC and uh, uh, many other times we think that IQAC must do the quality work in the college. No, IQAC cannot do the quality work. IQAC debates on quality. IQAC initiates quality. I, IQAC um, uh, designs quality measures. And uh, it is the departments th that are there in the college or the institution which take those ideas and start practicing them. So IQAC is only to uh, give ideas and to make things accountable to a system that it is creating for itself. Of course, there is a continuation uh, of uh, the quality upgradation that will happen and self-evaluation of teachers. Teachers begin to assess themselves and say how they have improved from last year to this year. Uh, what is that if they do not have research? Uh, do they um, uh, apply for research and continue to do their research? Or do they write papers? Or do they apply for research project? There is a continuous move towards enhancing quality even from the teacher perspective and it motivates teachers to participate in uh, academic and related institutional activities. We also find that many individuals, uh, the first category of people, they take up initiatives, a lot of initiatives in uh, maybe counseling students, maybe mentoring them, maybe helping them with the research projects, uh, maybe with uh, um, uh, carrying out some activities in the extension uh, service, any of these things, they otherwise would not have done. So once this uh, IQAC initiates these kind of, the kind of assignments that are given, any of these things could be happening with the teachers also getting involved. So teachers take the leadership of bringing about the change. If we depend upon the management, the principal heads to conduct the change, it may not always happen. So this change also happens at an individual level. So IQAC recognizes that even at the individual level, teachers are capable of bringing about the change and they initiate that kind of a change. So it ultimately, of course, improves the employability of our students because they get recognized outside to come from a good college and they behave uh, according to the um, uh, requirement of the uh, employer. So they know how to work through that because they have already been having several presentation skills, teaching methods, the pedagogy of work, everything might have undergone a change when an institution goes in for uh, accreditation. So uh, at the end, I would say that uh, uh, I would present these sessions for you uh, and I hope that you will uh, benefit from them. Um, but then uh, just by one or two person listening to these lectures will not do much good for the institution. This, uh, these kind of lectures must be attended by all members of the institution because everybody has to understand the ethos of quality, the idea of quality, the, the challenge of uh, quality creation and the way one can voluntarily contribute to quality. So when you share it with everyone, when everybody appreciates and has aspirations for the college to improve well uh, and be a part of a college which is well recognized in terms of quality outside, then quality becomes a natural process for an institution. So I shall present these sessions to you. Please share it with your colleagues um, now to start with so that your colleagues also can understand the idea of quality and that, that reduces the burden of uh, this IQAC and assessment process so much because everybody learns to become accountable for their own actions and plan accordingly. So please share with your colleagues uh, and others whom you feel uh, will benefit from that. And please do not uh, forget to uh, uh, click the uh, subscribe button. And another note of uh, advice, please do not listen to this lecture looking for some quick fix solutions to quality and assessment processes. It cannot happen. These require reflective listening. So you may listen to these things when you have time for it. Reflect on what is it that you can do to bring changes in yourself and thereby into that institution. This cannot be done in a hurried manner. The institution gets almost five years to bring about changes. So five years changes, we cannot do it in the last few months and expect changes. So you can begin this process with what I have uh, explained. I'm sure that you have already started working on quality, but I'm just telling that you share it with the young, uh, younger teachers who have just joined the institution. 
who have no idea about how these things work and what is their role in it. So training the teachers young about IQAC is the best way to move forward. So uh, meet you next time. I shall move into uh, another important uh, topic. To me, uh, what I felt is how do we enhance quality? What are the uh, calf parts or the routine ways in which we do? And therefore, how can we change these uh, processes? So thank you very much. Your suggestions are welcome. Uh, your comments are welcome. And I shall prepare a session to, for you as you may desire for your institution. Thank you very much.